Welcome to Explore Brockport, where we take an inside look at interesting activities and landmarks around the village. My name is Anthony Arnone, your local expert for today. Uh, with me today is Jason Yance. And I am Jason Yance, president of Rochester Theater Management. We own uh, four local movie theaters, and one of them is the, here, the Brockport Strand Theater. Yep, so today we're at uh, the Strand Theater in Brockport. We got some popcorn here today and some other snacks. Uh, what's, the, what's your go-to snack during movies? Anything in particular? I would say either Twizzlers, Sour Patch Kids, definitely the popcorn. You definitely can't, you can't popcorn. go to a movie theater without getting the, the fresh popcorn. If you have kids as well, you have to have popcorn. Oh, God, yeah. It's going to keep them in their seat the whole time. Absolutely, so. yes. That's what they're most excited for, believe exactly. it or not. And yeah. the movie, but yeah, the, the popcorn movie definitely is a huge... close second for the yes. movie, at least. Yes. Would you mind telling me a little bit about the, the history of The Strand at all? Um, when your family took over, uh, anything you know prior to that? Yeah, so uh, initially The Strand was, there was a movie theater called The Lyric Theater that started here in 1908. From what I read in the news, it was something more in the basement of this area. Okay. Um, 1960, and the Strand took over into, it's kind of more like a, a skating, like a roller skating rink concert mm. venue back in the day. Okay. And in 1946, it was transformed into what it is today, the okay. actual Strand. It was one, one screen at that time. Yep. Uh, 46, and then 1989, it's kind of fast forwarding quite a few yeah. years. <laughs> Just a handful. Um, some individual in Syracuse, SGM Entertainment, took mm -hmm. the theater over, and they actually divided it into three theaters. Uh, because, you know, movie theaters during that time, you couldn't really survive on one screen because there's so mm -hmm. many movies. So it was divided into three theaters, and then we took over the Strand in 1994. Awesome. My father was his first theater that he purchased. So I grew up in Brockport, and I always heard this, I don't know if it's a rumor or anything, but I always heard that the Strand is, is the second oldest theater, I don't know if it's movie theater, or theater in the country. Do you know if there's any basis to that at all? So technically it's the second oldest uh, movie theater still running first run movies. Ah, okay, I see. So second. that's how it works. There's gonna be a lot of theaters out there that are still showing you know, very old movies, mm -hmm. not even showing movies, just here and there. But this is one of the, the oldest that's showing first run movies like Spider-Man that just came out. How do you guys go about securing films? Do you guys ever get a uh, films in advance like the like spider-man like you mentioned do you watch it a day early a few days early no no um, really yeah they're so strict about the release dates and everything mm -hmm. that no we can we don't nobody in the industry can get digital copies beforehand really? so if they announce a certain release date like spider-man december 17th the the earliest we'll get it is december 16th Interesting. yeah so okay. no we don't necessarily get them ahead of time were there any momentous releases throughout your time of owning theaters that really stand out to you Yes, I would say one of the biggest ones was Titanic. Mm. Uh, when Titanic came out, it played in theaters for months. Okay. I think it played here at the Strand for at least two, maybe three months. Really? That's, that's just, actually insane. That's very unheard of for a movie to play mm -hmm. for that long. Did it do well that entire time? Oh, yeah, it was amazing. It did such fantastic business. Um, a monumentous one would be Avengers Endgame. On the flip side of that, any films that stick out to you that kind of fell flat? Tons of them. Tons of them. <laughs> None that stick I out. I can't name any specific, yeah. but yeah, there's plenty of movies that we book that don't do well, and it's just sometimes it's a shock, like, why didn't this do business? And yeah. it just, for some reason, doesn't. Can you talk a little bit about the day-to-day -day operations of owning a theater? And I actually would... I would find it interesting to talk about how it's potentially changed over time. Yeah. If, if it was different in 94 when you when you bought the Strand as opposed to today when everything's No, digital. it definitely was. In 1994 when we bought the Strand, all the film was 35 millimeter. Mm -hmm. um, so from 1994 to 2013, it was all just film. You get mm -hmm. one print of film, that shows in the theater, that's it. 2013, we invested in all digital equipment. 2019, we put all brand new seats in mm -hmm. here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then a couple years ago, we put new carpet in. Mm -hmm. uh, we've definitely upgraded the uh, marquee quite a few times and mm -hmm. renovated that, painted it. Um, yeah, there's, there's constantly uh, renovation plans to keep the strand going and keep it up to uh, normal levels of other theaters. Being located in a college town like Brockport, how does that affect uh, business in any way? It definitely helps. Um, I mean, you have the whole campus right there. So we offer a student discount for all the college kids. Mm -hmm. Normal ticket prices are eight seventy five. College kids pay seven seventy five. Awesome. And anytime the college kids come here, they're supporting a local business. Mm -hmm. They're not supporting, you know, a, a big corporation, and that's important right now. So, so with an uptick of streaming over the last decade or so, how has that affected theaters? Did you notice a drop off as soon as those started to pick up? Yes, absolutely. That's during COVID. The streaming of movies mm -hmm. is killing theaters. 
Um, and it's, it's getting away from it now. It was mm -hmm. okay during COVID while everybody was in lockdown mm -hmm. and you couldn't leave your house and that's fine. But really for movie theaters to survive, they have to be in theaters first for, pro, for a period yeah. of time, at least a month, two months. Um, so you mentioned COVID and, and obviously that had an impact across the country and, and on movie theaters in particular. Can you talk about the impact on the strand in, in specific and yeah, how it, it affected business? Absolutely horrible. Um, came out of the, well, we knew, we knew COVID was coming, but mm -hmm. it just came out of the blue. I remember it was, uh, March 17th, New York state told mm -hmm. us that we had to shut down all theaters, in New York state. So we were closed down for eight months. Wow. Um, zero revenue coming in. We had zero, zero, uh, government assistance at that point because mm -hmm. everything was just kind of on hold. Finally, once we did reopen, uh, New York state said we were at 25% capacity. Yep. We had to space people out in the theaters. Mm -hmm. And it was okay, but it was just, it wasn't anywhere near what we normally did with business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things are improving, but it's just, it was a horrible battle. Yeah. And it was something I don't want to go through again. Do you have any memories as a family from when you took over the Strand? I would just say growing up, this is kind of like a family thing. We bought the theater in 1994, and I remember... Um, my dad wanted to renovate the whole thing, so we put new carpet in, put new candy stand in. Mm -hmm. And it, my dad's in the business, my mom's in the business, my brother, me. And I remember I was in high school and we bought this theater, and the four of us ourselves actually scraped that sign, the marquee sign, mm -hmm. scraped the whole sign down, painted the whole sign. It was kind of a nice little family bonding moment. I mean, not many people get to do that and transform a business. and. Yeah presented to the public and I don't know, it kind of meant a lot to our family. Thanks for sitting down with me today, Jason. It was a uh, great to explore Brockport and learn more about the Strand Theater and its history in the village.